Uh, okay. This is uh, interesting, I think. Uh, all right. I, I don't know if the class trip is, uh, is in the house. I wanted to find out if, uh, if we should proceed and go on with this conversation or we wait for a few more minutes uh, in the event others want to join in. Maybe we could wait a few minutes. People okay. seem to be having difficulties. Oh, oh yes. that's Maybe unfortunate. Minutes, yes, but we've given them instructions and the link. Okay, okay. now. I yes. Yeah, last time I checked on, on Astria, we had a little over, I mean, close to 30 people. So I see nine or 10 now. Um, this is very strange indeed. But uh, so how many minutes do we wait? Maybe as we wait, uh, some, well, we're going to do introductions, I guess, but I want, I want to find out where people are logging in from. Uh, I see Kelly's in the vehicle there, but I, I mean, like, where in the, in the country? <laughs> um, I'm in Lusaka right now. I, I don't know where the rest of you are. Maybe you could. I'm in Lusaka too. Oh, okay, good. I'm also in Lusaka. Okay. Matilda here, I'm also in Lusaka. Okay. Yeah, Kiwe here, I'm also in Lusaka. Okay. Ari Peponamushi, I'm also in Lusaka. All right. Now I see a familiar face here. Euphemia, right? I know she, uh, in Imbala, unless she's moved or something. Yeah. But please continue with the introduction. Oh, done with introduction. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is, as we wait, I'm just going to share my presentation. I guess it's time for me to just share this. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, the way the way we normally, the way I normally do this is uh, all the interactions that I have online are recorded. So this session is being recorded. And so one of the... There we go. I mean, uh -uh. Mama. I'm Marina. So I'm saying, do it. And out learning. <laughs> Is it you saying Mutenga you? Oh, well, it's <laughs> 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 All right. So I was, I was going to find out uh, if we should continue waiting. For how long we should wait for the others? I see this is 18.09. I, I can wait. I have a bit of time. I don't know about that. Five minutes is reasonable, considering that we all knew that um, the meeting would take place at 18. 
Okay, uh -huh. so we can proceed then. Uh, I don't know what others think. Uh, maybe we could give it another three minutes just to allow those having technical issues to join in. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can ask on the group if anyone else is having problems. Constance, how are you? Hi, hi. <laughs> Constance, hi. Finally. Someone is waiting to be let in. Can you see the name? Uh, could, yeah, could you Kiwe, ask how are you with your kids? Just to try and, uh, and I'm well, and how are you? Again and then I'll let them in. Because I've been, <laughs> I've been, could you could you ask them to access the meeting link again and then I'll let them in? I've been letting people okay. in. Right. Okay. No, 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 no. Are we not supposed to switch off the microphone? Well, yeah. we will with this one. I just I thought maybe for now, as people are saying hello to each other, you are welcome to just keep them on yeah. and just uh, run. But once we start, we'll switch them off. Yes. Okay. Okay. Schneider. Hi, Tripa. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, dear. How are you doing? I'm good. How's Mufunina? <laughs> I can see our boy there. Yeah, man, this is into a car now. Choke up. Technology, man. Technology, my kid. If you make noise, I'm chasing you. Ah, oh, this is in my mind. Maybe when you are there from another session, are we not bad? <laughs> we are, but no trend. With people in the background making noise here, I don't want Jacqueline, I wish I stayed at work. I'm telling you, I had to leave home to come here. It wasn't going to work at home. Because my youngest is making noise here, wanting to be present. I hear you. <laughs> I can imagine. All right, so so I suppose we can we can start then. Uh, yeah. I think we can start. Can I ask that we switch switch off our microphones and then? Uh, so as I'm ranting, this is just going to be like a, a, a brief introduction, just to to walk us through some um, some aspects of how we are going to proceed with the treatment going forward. Right. Um, you probably noticed differences in the way that uh, you interacted with Jackson, for instance. Uh, right, and, and, I, and one of the things came out. I think Matilda had reached out to me to to ask if um, if I could if I could uh, be added to the WhatsApp group. I, I did say I should be added. I, I don't think I've been added yet. I'm not there, but I mentioned that uh, our preference is is to use the uh, the course mailing list just because it's a lot easier to track what's going on, right? Uh, but of course, I mean, every now and then I'll probably pop in the WhatsApp uh, group to see what's happening. Great. Uh, so like I said, this is going to be a short, short uh, introduction and really a reminder of how this course is, um, is going to be structured. Can I ask Matilda to, in the event that I lose connection, well, I'll periodically check, and I was going to ask her to just SMS or WhatsApp me in the event that I get disconnected or something. Uh, so if I can just change this, I guess, just if I can change this too. Uh, and if you feel like um, asking a question as I'm walking us through the slides I just prepared, just unmute your microphone and you're welcome to just interrupt me at any point in time, right? Most of these things you're probably already aware of, I guess, I don't know, but we'll see. So um, it turns out that uh, uh, apparently I'm co-teaching this course with uh, Jackson. So Jackson is a faculty staff in the Department of Computer Science. And I think you, you probably interacted with him during residential school. Uh, I'm not quite sure how much interactivity you had with him. Okay. Um, right, so I was saying you, you probably interacted with, with Jackson uh, during residential school, but, but uh, likely you were also interacting with him uh, as you were going through some of the things you discussed in residential school. I'm not sure which mode of communication you were using. 
my assumption is it's WhatsApp, uh, seeing as uh, the, the class rep seems to have, uh, have an obsession with WhatsApp here. Okay, uh, all right, so great. So uh, it'll be about myself. If you want to find out more about me, uh, just go to the uh, UNSA website, right? www.unsa.zm, and then go to the School of Education, and then access the Department of Library Information Science. You'll find a very nice profile about myself. Uh, so you should be able to get through to here, right? If you click here, you should be able to find a bit of information about me, right? Not so much, but also you can find out uh, information about me if you just go to my departmental profile. So I'll post the link in the chat just now so people can look it up if you haven't yet accessed it. I've posted something in the chat. On, ooh. All right, there we go. There's more information about me there. Uh, but you also find uh, a bit of information about me on my my, uh, my personal blog, which I haven't updated, up updated in a while, but there's certain sections that I do update religiously. So there's more information about me there as well. Um, occasionally, I mean, you can just Google me up and, and seeing as we are dealing with postgraduate students here, uh, you can also, you can Google me up, but also you can access my my uh, Google Scholar profile, which I'm gonna share in the link as well. Um, you notice that, uh, so the reason I'm posting things like my Google Scholar profile is, there are certain things that we're going to discuss, right? In the last remaining modules that are linked to uh, some of these things that I'm interested in, so far as research is concerned, right? Uh, right, so, my background, just a little bit about myself here. Uh, I think I'll start with UNSA. So I, I, I was at UNSA as an undergraduate student between 2000 and uh, 2003, um, and I graduated in 2007, I believe. I was supposed to have graduated in 2006, but closures, right? Um, I was in the School of Natural Sciences, so Department of Computer Science, and immediately after I graduated, I, uh, I got a job with then Sautel, um, and I was stuck with them all the way up to 2011. So I worked with them for close to about four years, after which I uh, I got into grad school. So I went to the University of Cape Town where I, um, I enrolled into a master's uh, program in computer science. So I was stuck there between 2011 all the way up to 2003. Uh, and after I graduated, I just decided to seamlessly transition into a PhD program. So I formally enrolled into uh, PhD program in 2004, and I, 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 I was at it all the way up to 2000, and uh, well, towards the end of 2007. Although technically speaking, I actually graduated in 2000 and um, 2000 and 2000 and not 2007, 2017. I graduated in 2018 formally. Now, again, seeing as we are going to be dealing with aspects of 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 some of the things that I did for my masters and and to a certain extent, what I did for my, uh, what, what, I, what I did, so far as my thesis, my PhD thesis is concerned, what I'm going to do if I can just get there is, ooh, this is taking time. You know, I'm wondering why. Am I even connected here? I am connected. Second time, I was trying to see if I could get through to, to, the, uh, to the repository so that I can share details of my, Anyway, it's fine, I'll share it afterwards. I wonder if I can search for it here. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I think that the, the, the UCT institutional repository should be down, but this is what I wanted. At your own time, if you can access this, you'll be able to read up a bit more about what I did for my master's. My master's was titled uh, Simple Digital Library, so it was, uh, it was in the field of digital libraries. Uh, and as it turns out, um, for those of you that have bothered to look at the course outline, you'll notice that we have a dedicated module that's tagged digital libraries, right? A lot of interesting stuff there. All right, uh, so yeah, so uh, when I, I, I left, I left UCT towards the end of 2017 to take up a job at UNSA, so I've been with UNSA since uh, 2017 or 2017. 2017, so I've been around for around two and a half years now. All right, so that's that about me. I'm going to have to politely ask that uh, right now, uh, as we are 
progressing our post for a little while, but could, could I kindly ask that each one of you just type in uh, these five, is it six things? So your full name, where, where you did your undergraduate studies from, what you currently do, where you are currently based, uh, and what you hope to get out of this course. Now, because we're a lot of us, um, I, I would just ask us to just type in the chat. Just type, type your introductions here. Right? If you can manage to do that, that would be nice. Uh, afterwards, I'll, I'll probably crawl through these, these um, chat transcripts to get a sense of where people are, what they do. Um, right, and so one of the reasons I normally do this is I, I normally frame some of these conversations I have with colleagues uh, from the perspective of what they currently do, right? Not just from the perspective of the, of the cause itself. So really appreciate it if you could type in the chat, which I hear this. Uh, these details here. All right, uh, so on with it. So a reminder again, mo most of these were actually, I think, up uploaded onto, onto Astria, but I, I just thought, I don't know if Dr. Piri introduced you to this, but I just thought I would gloss over some of these things. Uh, specifically, I'm referring to aspects associated with the course itself. Uh, by, the, by the time we are done with the eight modules that are associated with this course, we should all be able to identify the different types of information and communication technologies that are applicable to information management. And, and really our interest when we, we, we are discussing or when you discuss information management, and in fact information management will continue coming up, our interest is from the perspective of so-called uh, integrated library systems, right? Um, but you notice that as we're discussing these different types of integrated management systems, specifically when we start looking at things like uh, content management systems, uh, uh, things like uh, information retrieval systems, digital library systems, you notice that they'll, they'll have certain things in common. And those things they have in common is this broad definition that was introduced to us um, regarding information systems. Right, remember those key aspects associated with information systems or hardware procedures, uh, software, uh, data sources, right? These, those, these are the things that I'm talking about. And you notice actually, once we start discussing things like digital libraries that they'll come up, right? Uh, a digital library is nothing more than a composition or a composite of all those different aspects that were introduced to us. And then also, one of the key learning outcomes for the course is um, we want to be able to get to a stage where we can use markup languages and relational database management systems. Now, our definition of markup languages is going to use hypertext uh, markup language or HTML as a case, but we'll soon discover that there's a broad range of markup languages. So XML, SGML. Uh, these days, if you go to Wikipedia, for instance, you notice that Wikipedia is written using uh, a markup language called uh, I don't know if people know about this, but uh, it's written in Markdown, right? Uh, so maybe we can, we can use another case uh, example of, of markup languages other than HTML, we're getting bored with HTML. But one of the reasons why we use HTML as, as a case is because it's linked to some of these things that we are going to discuss. Now, by Markdown, if you edit Wikipedia, if you're Wikipedia and like Lighton, you notice that all these different things that you're seeing here, if you want to edit Wikipedia, this is all Markdown. And Markdown is nothing more than uh, a markup language. It gets even better though. There are other esoteric markup languages like, uh, I use a, a lot of LaTeX when I'm preparing manuscripts for instance. So uh, every time I'm, I'm writing articles where the journal for instance, or the conference will explicitly state that you write using LaTeX, I use a markup language called LaTeX, right? So, what you're seeing here, I don't know if you can see this, this is an example of a markup language called LaTeX, right? Um, and the idea behind LaTeX really is it does pretty much the same thing that your word processor would do, right? Uh, but the emphasis is placed on content. So the idea is you want to spend a lot of your time worrying about the content and not the look and feel of the document that you're preparing, right? Okay, um, and then one of the other learning outcomes here is you want to be able to explain the implications of these things we are calling, uh, or the application of ICTs in libraries and information services. Now this will, this will come up a lot when we discuss digital libraries and when we discuss module number eight, which is integrated library systems, right? And then finally, we want to be able to apply major ICTs in library information services. Here's the thing, right? 
Once we get to module number eight, you will notice that it will be a combination of all the different facets and um, aspects of information management systems and some of the concepts that will be introduced to us once we look at information retrieval or the theory around information retrieval and digital libraries. And to some extent, I guess things like uh, markup languages, right? Specifically HTML here. Because if you, if you really sit down and think about these um, integrated libraries, uh, management systems like Viewfind, for instance, or Koha, which perhaps most of you are familiar with. Um, what you notice, OpenDB, what you notice is uh, most of these things is there's a web-based. If it's something with web-based, it means that the web interface itself that you interact with, right? Wikipedia is web-based. The web interface that you interact with is in part, uh, uh, is in part implemented using so-called HTML, right? And I guess Wikipedia is a bad example, but what you're seeing on Lighton's, uh, if I can get there, on Lighton's personal blog is all HTML, right? If I can just get there, this is weird. So all of this is, this is not my personal blog, but all of this is HTML, right? All of this is HTML. This is HTML, right? So once we look at, and I know Dr. Piri had, uh, I was gonna mention, I'll mention which was in, but Dr. Piri has told me that you covered most of these things, which is good stuff. Uh, this stuff we are seeing here is what we want to be able to understand. So this is, if you look at this, uh, the elements that I'm, that, that I'm inspecting here, this is all HTML, H2 tag, right? The things that hopefully Dr. Piri introduced to you, gives here, uh, P tags and whatnot, right? So essentially, I mean, for you to arrive at something like this, you in part make use of HTML, right? But of course, there's, there's a lot of other things behind the scenes, like uh, cascading style sheets, for instance. And in the event that you're working with uh, so-called um, dynamic data, right? You'd, you'd link this thing, this interface to some data source. Uh, and it's typically the case these days that content management systems or websites are interface with or will have a relational database management system in the back end. Unless if you are working with large scale applications like Facebook, for instance, Facebook will not use a relational database management system. So as part of our discussion or our revision on database management systems, we'll maybe take a detour and try and talk about Mongo, things like graph based databases and uh, NoSQL databases like uh, MongoD MongoDB so that we Gain an appreciation of what the fundamental differences are between those things, right? I'll pause and check if people are there. Oh, and Harriet wants to come in. Oh, yes, there. Okay. Some people want to come in. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, and some people left, which is unfortunate. I wonder if maybe we should cruise here. Okay. Um, and then this, this, this for me is the most important part of uh, of this interaction. It's actually one of the reasons why I decided for us to have this interaction. Right, the, the way that I plan to do this, at least the remaining modules, is uh, I'll just create and check if someone wants to get in. Okay. The, the, way, the way I want to do this is uh, the way that I propose we do this, not I, but we, is um, for some, for some practical oriented topics that we're going to cover and they're coming very soon, right? So once we, we start looking at markup languages or once we revise markup languages and relational database management systems, um, because of the, the mode of instruction here, uh, we think it's going to be very helpful if we produce offline screencasts, right? So I will produce something similar to, to this, and I'll just quickly go to an example screencast that I just did for the postgraduate course that I'm involved with. And this is because of the whole COVID thing, but, but it's just as well applicable to you. So what I mean is I would, I would produce something like this where I walk you through I walk you through the practical parts of the of that particular topic, um, just because the modules or the information that's going to be shared with you is not going to be that helpful, right? So there'll be recorded screencasts that will be shared with you. Uh, you consume it at your own time. Of course, there'll be like time allocated to that. And then um, besides that, all of these things by the way will be shared via Astria, right? But also not just Astria, I normally dump uh, all these screencasts that I produce as part of the courses that I teach onto my YouTube channel and the stuff is properly curated into playlists. So you should be able to find a playlist after this session, um, a playlist that, oh wow, I thought this thing was branded, this is weird. Okay. You should be able, oh there it is. You should be able to find a playlist specific to list 5310, right? 
So you notice if I, I not just play this, if I can just go to the homepage and go to the section of Unza courses so that people see here. And I uh, can but, but just, uh, sorry about that. What I mean is you find it under this section, Teaching Invest of Zambia, right? And I'll rename this. You find playlists specific to different courses. You want to choose the 2019 slash 20 list 5310. You'll find everything, recorded interactions, like the, this interaction we're having right now. The offline screencast that I'm going to be sharing will be dumped there as well, right? So I will pause and then I'll dump it into the into the chat so that people can bookmark that thing. But also that link will be in the course, uh, if I can find it, it will be in the course, wow. Okay, this is embarrassing. Okay, yeah, it will be in the course, short course syllabus that I've updated, which should be updated with uh, correct information here, right? Uh, it will be in the course syllabus, which I'll share. I'll share a document a document that has all these different details, together with the slides that I'm using right now, by the way. They're updated. So what I mean is uh, the, the thing that's tagged as uh, module one on Astria, that thing is outdated. I'll delete it and replace it with these revised things, right? So I will share this document. It will have all these links that I'm pasting in there, but you might as well just uh, bookmark them, I suppose. All right, so offline screencasts and then, because because we're not um, undergraduate students here, the idea, right, the way that uh, we've we've actually handled this course, 5310 in the past, for, for the regular mode of instruction, is we've, we've had seminars and workshops, right? And workshops were extremely helpful for the practical-oriented cases, uh, sessions. Why? Because we would sit in one room um, and then work through some, some practical, some practical tasks and Lighton would be around to just run around and help people get started. But because we are doing this using a distance mode of instruction, it is one of the reasons why we are replacing that kind of setup with these offline screencasts. And I do hope people here will be able to walk through these screencasts. And it's not just going to be screencasts, by the way, it will also be a so-called Jupyter Notebooks, which I'll be sharing with you. So if I can show you an example of a Jupyter Notebook for uh, the CSC 57 course that I'm involved with. So it's, it's something similar to what you're seeing here. And all you do is you just play, play the tasks that are in here and see the output in certain instances, and then be able to see the output, right? So hopefully a combination of this Jupyter notebooks and, um, and offline screencasts uh, should be able to compensate for, for what we normally benefited from when we, um, we had like face-to-face -face interactions with the regular mode of instruction. And then another key aspect for postgraduate courses, Now I'm not sure how these other courses you're taking are handled, is this whole notion of seminars. Um, we found them extremely valuable. What we've done in the past is we've invited people, industry experts, people that actually practice these things to come and give talks aligned with the topics that we'll be covering at that point in time. So it's become somewhat of a tradition for us to invite um, the UNSA Institutional Repository Manager, Mr. Zulu, so that he gives us a rundown of how he manages the UNSA, and I'll pause to see if people are there, I think they're there, to give us a rundown of how he manages this platform here, right? Because it turns out that once we have a discussion of, um, of digital libraries, this is a classic example of a type, a specialized type of a digital library, right? Institutional repository, granted a, a whole bunch of them, right? Uh, but, but Mr. Zulu and people like uh, the Zika's librarian, Dubeka, who was uh, our student last year, but she's doing her research part, the deputy librarian for Zika's, uh, Dokoe, who I'm working with uh, as part of the research project she's working on. These are all people that we were hoping we could invite. Don't know if this is going to work out. We'll try and see if we can have uh, online seminars. So we invite them to come and give online seminars similar to what we're having right now. We think those are extremely helpful in trying to help us better understand the things we're going to be discussing in this course. I can, I can create slides and share them with you and just say, here are the slides, here are the modules, read them. I, I don't think for a course like this, I don't think that that's going to be very useful, right? And the other reason why we invite people to come and give talks is because one of our goals 
is to try and give you ideas of things that you can potentially work on in phase two, which is next year, the research component. Uh, now, on that note, you'll notice that I, will, I have a shameless plug. I have a, a number of students that I'm working with. Um, and so the plan is to invite some of the senior students that are, have gotten to an advanced stage in their research. So I'm working with Angela, for instance, who, um, who is looking at um, uh, effective workflows that can be integrated into uh, the ingestion process of electronic thesis and dissertations, for instance. So we are thinking of inviting her in the event that we're going to have these seminars, right? Uh, Dokoe, for instance, who is obsessed with uh, library portals, right? She's only just started her, her, um, her research. Uh, her, her research. She's actually still working on a proposal, but we've got into a stage where we're about to finalize her proposal, right? I'm, co I'm supervising her and Dr. Kandera is co-supervising her. Uh, so so we, are, we, are hoping, we are hoping we can bring these different people on board and then try and see if we can try and spark, um, spark a little bit of thinking so that you can already start thinking about some of the things that you can work on next year. Now, if I were you, right, as we are covering these modules, you should already start thinking about how you can incorporate them into what you're going to be doing next year. Because very soon, one of the tasks, and I don't know if you've got into this stage with the candela, but one of the things you're going to have to do in 5010 is you are going to be taught to say, I think it's carved out as an assessment or something. I don't know if things have changed for the IDE mode of instruction here. But you work through some hypothetical proposal. And the plan is that that particular proposal is eventually going to be, uh, it's going to manifest itself into some topic that you're going to work on next year, right? In the event that it's, it's vetted and verified, right? Towards the end or something. I think people from the department are invited or something. But also some, some of the people that I'm going to invite, uh, uh, fourth year students that are working on capstone projects. In any given year, I, I work with uh, students that about two or three groups of students, as it turns out this year, I'm working with, with three. I mean, sorry, two groups of students, right? Groups of five and four. Um, in the past, we've done some really exciting things that, and, and it's quite sad, we haven't really gotten to a stage where we've, uh, we've, um, we've published something from quality work which they've done. Uh, most of the students I work with will normally do like really high quality work, I assure you. So, by the way, the, subject repository that we set up for the list department, which I'm sharing just now, that is an output from a capstone project that was done in 2018. Brilliant group of students that I, I worked with, they were trying to, no, not trying, but they were investigating the feasibility of using subject repositories, right? Uh, if you're interested, you can read up on what they did, if I can find that. Ooh. There we go, Matthews and Company, very brilliant uh, groups of, uh, this is brilliant uh, fourth years that I worked with in 2018. Um, so if you're interested, you can read up on that. But also you can just search for light on, on, on that particular link and then you'll be able to read up on projects that we've worked on uh, in the past. In 2018, I worked with a group that were investigating um, barriers associated with open access publishing at, uh, with a specific focus on UNSA, for instance. So a lot of interesting things. This year, one of the groups I'm working with is going to be looking at um, OER repositories. These are just a specialized type of digital library. So I will invite them to come and uh, give a talk um, about, uh, about, about once they've, they've gotten to an advanced stage, I guess, and once we cover digital libraries. I, th I think this is all important because it will help underscore some of the things we're going to be discussing. Now, if you're interested, the, um, the other thing I, I guess I should talk about here is uh, if you're curious about what uh, I do with targeted Talented, ta talented students that I work with, I think we should have a playlist uh, associated with digital libraries here, the digital libraries. I run a short, a small little lab called the Data Lab. We call it the Data Lab. There's a website, but it's currently down. It's going to be online very soon. It's down. It's, CICT is supposed to help us with this. I will share the link to the Data Lab. Uh, that's a link to the small little research group that I, I run. It's loosely composed of master students that I work with. Um, I work with master students from the computer science department and from the li uh, library and information science department. But, I, but, but you also find uh, profiles of past fourth year students that I've worked with, including links to work that they've done, right? Uh, but uh, a, few, a few days ago, was it last week or week before last, we, 
this is in, in, in embarrassing. I thought I would find it. We, uh, wow. We, we actually, oh, there we go, no? We, um, ah, there we go. We, we had a short workshop. Uh, it's become somewhat of a tradition for us to, to have uh, annual workshops. These, we tag them as progress slash proposal workshops. So the senior students will give an update of what sort of progress they've made in their research. If you're interested, recordings of uh, the talks, sorry, that's the wrong link. Recordings of the talk are on my YouTube channel and you can access them there. But some of the topics have little to do with, um, with the things we're going to be covering. No, actually, most of, all of them are uh, tied to that. Yeah, so Dokoe's talk is there, uh, Angela's talk. Uh, you probably won't be interested in Kadea's talk because Kadea is more interested in educational technology. So it has little to do with the things we're going to be looking at, except if you want to look at what you did from the perspective of information systems or something, which is module number one. All right, so the other activity, right, is this so-called residential school. Now, uh, I, I don't know, I haven't really bought in into this whole idea of, oh no, we can take advantage of residential school where we look at practical things that should have been covered um, uh, when students were not, uh, were not on campus during residential school. I don't think that's going to work out because typical residential school is like two weeks. Now, there's little you can do in two weeks, right? Insofar as if you are looking at introducing people to the practical aspects of the course, there's very little you can do. I'll be the first one to tell you this, right? Most of the things we cover in this course, most of the things we've covered in this course have taken us maybe three, four sessions, four weeks for people to understand what we're talking about, right? And, and everything that's coming our way is, has some practical aspect. Backup languages, racial database management systems, NoSQL database systems, uh, information retrieval systems, digital libraries, right? Integrated library management systems. All these things will require some sort of practical aspect. And seeing as we only have one residential school remaining, I don't think uh, this whole notion of, oh, taking advantage of res residential school to cover practical aspects of the course is going to work. It will not work, which is why we are saying, um, sure, residential school is going to be there, but residential schools will typically be reserved for assessments or tests. And sure, we'll probably have some interactions. We'll see what sort of interactions we can have. Maybe problem problematic aspects of the things that would have been covered, right, before residential school. But the thinking here is that uh, we can try and help out in some of the things that are going to be introduced to us by having live question and answer sessions or live interactions similar to this one. So the plan I have, and I'm open to suggestions here if you have comments, I'd really love comments. Uh, I think this thing will work best if uh, I have a lot of input from uh, new colleagues. Uh, if it was an undergraduate course, I would have just said, this is what we're going to do, but I, I want this thing to work. Uh, I want it to work because this is a hands-on course. And I've never taught this course using this mode of instruction. So I'm trying to see if we can, we can make this work. I think it should be able to work if we combine offline screencasts, live interaction. So the plan is, once every, maybe every after two weeks or something, we have the live interaction so that I try and, so that we try and see if people have specific issues to do with the offline screencasts that would have been shared and the modules, right? More like course correction, if you want to think of it from that perspective, I suppose, I don't know. Uh, so that's the plan, so live interactions. And then of course, uh, the thing that most people would be interested in is assessments. So the assessments are just broken down loosely into three categories assignments, uh, class theory tests, and the final exam. And I think this was introduced to us by Jackson, but um, yeah, assignment three will be broken up into, these are, these are mostly going to be practical assignments, by the way. They'll start coming your way very, very soon. Now, Jackson was about to send through an assignment. I'm still talking to him to find out if there's aspects of what he covered that he would want to, to uh, send out as an assignment, that would be nice, but in the past, most of the assignments have come from the markup language class, the relational database management, sorry, module, uh, and the information retrieval module, right? So we plan to do that as well. Uh, these, these are really trivial things and you're normally given a lot of time to work through these, typically two weeks at the minimum, right? And then the test, the idea of the test is you write this test during residential school video. You're supposed to have two tests, but looking at what's going on right now, I uh, don't know how this is gonna be done. Uh, seeing as it's a postgraduate course, we could just as well easily have uh, this theory test, one, one of the theory tests as a take home. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, incidentally, when I was a student myself, uh, when I was doing my master's, 
uh, the coursework component, most of the exams that I wrote were take home exams, right? 24 hours, write the exam. Uh, it works. So we can do that as long as ID is comfortable with that. And then there's a final exam reading. The split, I guess people are wondering, is 60-40. Uh, so 40 goes to the exam, 60% goes to the assessments, right? And then in terms of the software tools that we're going to extensively use in the course, um, there's a whole list here. Some of them will become very clear once we start looking at the practical components. Um, but in case people are wondering, VirtualBox, we normally use this as a hypervisor. We normally use this to make sure that you're using the same setup that Lighton uses, right? So that in the event that you run into problems, Lighton can easily help you with the problem because you're using the same environment. Uh, and we normally use uh, Ubuntu in this hypervisor, in this virtual environment. Don't worry, all these things will make sense. Uh, so during our discussion of rational database management systems, we'll probably use SQL Lit. Uh, this is similar to the access that Dr. Perry introduced you to. But access is, you, you don't really, you typically want to look at a, a more, well, access is fine, but usually a case example that's used is typically things like MySQL, Postgres, QL, and in our case, we use SQL Lit. But these are all the same, really. Underneath, they make extensive use of structured query language, SQL, right? So it doesn't matter what sort of uh, relational database management system you're using, you still run the same SQL queries, yeah? Uh, and then maybe at some stage, you also play around with, uh, uh, I guess, an OSQL database like MongoDB, right? So we want to get to a stage where, uh, if I can get there, let me see the post to see if people are still there. I think they are, okay. Uh, at some stage, we'll play around with MongoDB so that, uh, so that we, can, we can run these commands like Lighton is running, right? Uh, why do you want to do this? So that, oh wow. I wonder if, I guess, maybe. Uh, so that we can run these, these commands here, right? Uh, so I'll just say, right? Uh, so that we're able to do these things. And these are all tremendously useful skills because the vast majority of you at some point in time will get to interact with some pieces of technologies that we are going to work with. Information retrieval systems, whether direct or indirect. No integrated library management system out there will not have a search, <laughs> a search, um, um, uh, an information retrieval system integrated with it. This thing that I showcased to you, this DSpace thing, by the way, the subject repository runs DSpace, this one. The UNSA repository runs DSpace. All of these things, when you search for content, behind the scene, in the background, there's an information, and I should just say for Lighton, I guess, for Piri. Behind the scenes, there's an information retrieval system that facilitates searching and browsing. So whether you like it or not, if you're pursuing a career that involves information management, records management, if you're a librarian, at some point in time, you will interact with these search platforms. So you want to understand exactly how they work. It's tremendously important that you understand how they work. Maybe depending on the work environment you work in, there'll be a requirement to say, oh, can you make changes to the library section of the, uh, of the website, for instance, right? This is the case for UNSA, by the way. If you go to the UNSA section of, of, the, of the website, the UNSA website, uh, the library section of the UNSA website, I'm confusing myself here. If you go to the library section, this part is managed by the library. CICT does not manage this, so the library manages this. If you look at, this is an example of an integrated interface, by the way. If you look at these things here, links to journals and people searching, there are people in the library that are paid to do this. Behind the scenes, in fact, the, this interface here is integrated with a number of other services. Ideally, you should be able to search using this unified interface and that searching is facilitated by an information systems, I'm sorry, an information retrieval system, which is an information system anyway, right? So. So all of these things will become extremely useful, uh, will become clear, sorry, and of course it'll be useful once we have a discussion of information retrieval systems. And as a practical, we shall either use Elasticsearch or Apache Solar, perhaps even we'll see. Uh, in the past, we've made extensive use of Apache Solar, by the way. If, in case people are wondering, this space uses Apache Solar behind the scenes, right? But all of these things will become very clear by the time we are wrapping up this course, right? Uh, and then in terms of resources, everything will be dumped on Austria now. 
this COVID pandemic has really messed up things. And also once when this course was introduced, I was on uh, annual leave, which is why Jackson had to come in initially, which is why I was not around during the residential school. I was out of town. Um, but the idea is uh, the modules are going to be, what you have currently on Astria, those are not the modules that are going to be available. Those are course notes that were used last year. I'm making changes to these things. Uh, very little will change, but there's bound to be new information that's going to be shared. Uh, also, there'll be nicely formatted and presented links to additional resources right there within Astria. So what I'm trying to say is all these course resources will be shared on Astria, right? You want to make sure that you have access to Astria. Uh, apparently, it's not me, it's a directive that everything should be on Astria, uh, whatever that means. Uh, so these modules will be updated very, very soon. Uh, if I can make a commitment, hopefully before the end of the month, I should be done with the changes that I'm making to the modules. Uh, apologize for the delay here. Great. Uh, and then additionally, once we start working with these tools, I will be sharing these tools on my profile, my web profile, but of course links will also be shared to you, right? So these tools will typically be shared on my web profile. And my web profile always has a, a link to the current year of the course. Now, I haven't created this site, but I mean, I haven't created that web page for the course for this year, but and this is in the course syllabus, by the way. Oh, crap. But this thing will be made available to everybody. So you will find uh, the software tools that we're going to be using, you'll find them on, on my web profile which I'm sharing in the chat just now. Uh, but also the, the links will be in the syllabus as well. I shall also include the links on Astria. Now the Astria site again needs to be revamped somehow. Uh, I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to revamp just because I, I'm using Astria for the first time. We, in the past we've used Moodle, but hopefully very soon, maybe by the time I'm done with the modules, the Astria site would have been properly, properly set up, right? So that all these links are easily accessible. Uh, great. So. So you should have access to something similar to this, right? Where you have links to the notes and the software tools that we have and whatnot, right? Uh, okay. So all these large files can be, will be accessible on the, the website, but also you can download them directly from the source, right? So we normally provided them like this because most of the students, when we have face-to-face -face interactions, they have access to the user network or EduRome, and so they can easily download these large files, most of these are extremely large files, right? Anyways, uh, the books haven't changed. Now, I, I, I include these prescribed and recommended texts, some of them because they are in the program document. But you'll notice that uh, the references that will be added in the bibliographic slide for each of the modules that will be shared with you will have links to additional resources, right? So these things are just, most of these books are there because they're in the program document, although some of them are classic. And these are classic literature that I know are going to be tremendously useful. Some of the modules are going to be covering, like this is a classic uh, digital library uh, book, freely available online, right? Um, yeah, very nice book as well. Very, uh, I guess, gentle introduction to information retrieval. So the tentative breakdown for now, and I'm saying tentative is going to be as follows. So I'm not sure about the paper readings. Maybe we might incorporate them, maybe not. I don't know. We just feel it's important for postgraduate courses. But for now, we we'll work with this same split so that 60% is split up as follows. 5% for paper reading, 5% for participation in seminars. So once we have invited speakers, you get marks for attendance and for asking questions. And then 10% is directed towards practical and written assignments, 20% to assignments. Yeah, so the total 20, 20. 40, there's something wrong here, 40, oh, 50, 60. Right, so the total now should be able to add up to 60. And then the remaining 40 is to exams. Now, in case you're interested in the performance of people, it just gives you an idea of how people performed in one of the, these are masks. In, uh, is it last year's, last year's, I don't know if this was last year or the year before, can't remember, right? So you notice that uh, what you want to pay particular attention to is the cost assessment score here, which is out of 60. Right. Uh, this should be second nature to you. We don't have to talk about this, but you want to take note if you did your undergraduate studies at UNSA, this is completely different from, um, from uh, the, the thresholds associated with the undergraduate programs, right? And specific to the, in particular here, the PASMAC. 
it's 50%, not 45, or 40 for certain schools, right? So you want to take note. Uh, great, so again, I always talk about this academic dishonesty, right? Uh, the policy is simple. There are ways of checking if people are plagiarized. So you get a zero if you are caught uh, engaging in any sort of academic malpractice. Uh, and then, again, I'm just co-teaching this with Jackson. Um, he's probably going to come in in certain aspects of the discussion on this one, just because I think it, it makes for a more engaging course if you have different people come in and share ideas about how they do things, right? You notice tremendous differences in the way that Jackson teaches when you compare the way Lighton teaches, and that's good, right? Uh, and it turns out that some, some people are more knowledgeable in certain areas, right? Uh, so probably invite Jackson in some of the some of the modules that we're going to, to cover here, subsequent modules, will probably come back as well. Uh, and I'm saying possibly invited talks because we had a discussion about seminars, if you remember. I said we would have, oh, I said we would have seminars, right? So we'll come up with a list of invited speakers. I do encourage you to attend because there are marks associated with participation. Um, I'll attend if I were you, actually it's helpful. It will help you understand these things. Thanks to those of you that attended the CS57 for one. I don't know if you found it useful. We had a group of people from CIDAS. All right, and then in terms of communication, you see when you have a large group of people, right? 30, it's close to 30 people here. WhatsApp, I, I don't know about WhatsApp. I, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? I, and I should give you an example here. I don't know about you, but I've, I've been added to a ton of WhatsApp groups, right? Now, keeping track of these micro posts that people send through in WhatsApp is extremely hard. Tremendously difficult, right? Uh, so what I do is I mute these things. There's this group I'm part of where, which has uh, the 850 plus faculty staffing at UNSA, right? Who does that? But anyway, it works, I guess. So people are selling things, people are sending memes. I don't know. Uh, and even worse still for this WhatsApp group that you say you have, please add me there, by the way. But uh, I don't think hello? I'll... Uh, hello? Can you still hear me? Hello? C can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, perfect, thank you. So I was talking about WhatsApp, and this is going to Matilda, the class rep. Thank you very much, William. Now, yeah, so this, <laughs> this theme of WhatsApp, right? I, I don't know about you, but I, I the attention spans, it's, it's horrible, right? So I mute these things just because I can't keep up with what's happening, right? Imagine a situation where you have a question. And you ask a question in the WhatsApp group where you have Dr. Kakandelwa, you have these other Mrs. Zulu, you have, Ms. You have Ms. Mr. Hamoya, you have uh, Mr. Njov there. It's difficult, right? You have 20 plus people. They're asking different questions. It's hard, which is why what we found extremely useful in our case is mailing lists. And it's not just us, actually. This is how typical causes are managed. Why do you want a mailing list? Because using the mailing list, you can just go to the mailing this web interface and we'll fix the issue of the web interface. And then you can see what sort of interaction took place using this nice web interface. And let's go to one of the things that has a lot of interaction here. And then you see what people discussed, right? It's very easy to follow through. In fact, you can tag these by topic, right? It makes life tremendously much, much more bearable than WhatsApp. But please, by all means, add me to the WhatsApp group but if you want to ask a question, official communication is via the mailing list. If you haven't been added to the mailing list, please uh, have Matilda add you. Or alternatively, you can just send me an email yourself, right? Uh, lighton.piri at unza.zm. And I'll add you to the mailing list. These are usually, the, the mailing lists I normally manage are active. This is how we, sh we broadcast information to do with talks, scheduled interaction. Uh, so, for instance, if the class rep approaches me and says, well, maybe there's a complaint from the class to say they need an interaction, we don't want to wait for two weeks, you can do that, by the way. We schedule an ad hoc interaction. We don't have to wait until we, and sorry, I said two weeks, but maybe we can do this at the end of each module, right? But if you want us to meet midway through the module, we can schedule this ad hoc interaction. Once we schedule it, we send, we send details of this interaction via the mailing list. <clears throat> but of course, when you have the class rep, the class rep will probably convey the message to the WhatsApp group. 
if 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 people want to use WhatsApp. Are, are there any questions before we quickly just remind ourselves of what we're covering in the course? We just need a, a few more minutes, maybe 10 to 15, before we end this session. But are there questions with regard to what I just ranted about? I, I don't expect there to be questions, seeing as most of these things were probably introduced to you by Jackson or something. Okay, no questions. Okay. <clears throat> if you think of any question, we have another session towards the end, right? So a reminder that in this course, the, these are the broad learning outcomes we're working towards. And of course, you're free to, to stop me whenever you feel like stopping me, by the way. So these are the broad learning outcomes we're working towards, right? As part of this course. Uh, but specifically, these are broken down into eight modules. Module one, you covered with Jackson, just a brief introduction to information systems. Very trivial, I guess it was revision for those of you that did 3010, right? Um, if you did your Bachelor uh, of Arts in Library Information Science uh, or Library Information Studies, then you know you did this uh, at UNSA, right? Um, but also, it's, perhaps this is one of the simplest modules, actually. And then Dr. Peer introduced us to this whole notion of computer networks and the internet, how the internet works, right? So local area networks, metropolitan area networks, and uh, wide area networks, and we zeroed down on uh, the different services that we have associated with the so-called internet because the internet is not just websites the internet is uh, composed of things that Jackson highlighted as being protocols so when you're sending mails you use the internet right protocol uh, things like uh, simple mail transfer protocol right SMTP protocols like IMAP right uh, protocols like POP3 right all those different things we're sending mail when you are accessing remote yeah. services, remote servers, like I normally do for servers that are online, I use SSH, use another protocol, FTP for files, right? Uh, and we notice that we realize that all these different protocols, right, are specific to services. So for FTP, for instance, you'd be dealing with files here. HTTP, it's things like web websites, same goes for HTTPS. SMTP, IMAP, POP, these are all to do with emails. But there's more out there, right? And uh, we'll soon discover, I guess, these things will come up when we start looking at different ports that we work with. But everything centered around protocols, protocols are still with ports, and all this uh, we understand by now. We understand how a packet is transmitted. So if you add me to a WhatsApp, to a WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp, uh, and I wonder if I can. Hmm, I'm trying to, okay. I was trying to see if I can use it. If you want me to a, WhatsApp, to a WhatsApp group and I send a message, by now everybody should be able to understand exactly how that message is sent. How does the message leave Lighton's phone and get to your phone, right? Yeah. We, we were introduced to this whole notion of packets, addressing, right? So your message is broken up into packets and those individual packets are transmitted piecewise, because a packet has a specific size associated with it, right? So you'd have literally a lot of packets being sent through and these packets will be going through different paths, right, on the network. So we understand this. And in fact, Dr. Piri introduced us to this notion, notion of the, uh, the OS model, right? The open system interconnection model, which breaks up. Uh, so when you're sending a message, you can literally see, you can visualize this transmission of the message by understanding the OSI model, right? So when the package is received from Lighton's machine. Give me a chair. Oh, sorry? Right. So when when um, when when the packet when a packet is being is originated from Lighton's machine, it, it starts from the hardware layer, right? So from uh, physical layer to the hardware all the way up to the application layer. So if I'm sending an email, right, it's represented using so-called ones and zeros, right? So those things are going to be assembled in packets, and it will go up to the application layer, which in my case would be maybe Thunderbird, or it would be this Gmail application that I normally use, right? So the Gmail application falls at this layer, the application layer, right? And we know that once this, when the packets reach your end, they'll first of all hit your application layer and then come down to the physical layer. This is your computer essentially. So these are important things that were introduced to us, very wonderful and exciting things. 
and we are setting the stage for what would soon discuss or what what does markup languages specifically HTML, right? Uh, we have a case study service that we looked at the World Wide Web, so-called World Wide Web, and our focus really was on so-called uh, hypertext transfer protocol, right, or secure hypertext transfer protocol. So the things we see as HTTP or HTTPS when you're accessing um, when you're accessing something on the internet, every web resource associated with the website has this thing, this HTTP or HTTPS. These are things that Jackson introduced to us, right? Great stuff. Okay. Uh, and then we'll, we will go into markup languages and our case is just going to be on uh, markup, uh, HTML essentially. But like I said, we'll probably introduce, we'll sneak in some other things there. And then, and I know Jackson did mention that during his walkthrough of uh, HTML and uh, uh, RDBMS, it didn't cover as much. So he actually told me to redo some of these things. So what I'm proposing, and we can have a discussion about this, is I'm going to start all these so-called uh, offline screencasts from Moji 3. Just so Moji 3 would be like a recap, Moji 4 would be like a recap. We'll have a bit of practicals here, and then we'll quickly move on to, um, I guess, digital libraries or something. All right. So... So after Moji 3, which is a markup languages, supposed to be tagged as markup languages, by the way, we'll transition to relational database management systems, look at the theory behind uh, relational database management systems, look at advantages of these things, and then also take a short detour to look at other types of databases, because it's not just relational database management systems. You have MongoDB. I don't know if I showed you, more. this is MongoDB, right? Not SQL database. So, when I'm querying MongoDB, I don't write SQL queries, like go select star from table name or update uh, update set values and whatever, right? For relational database management, the, the language that I use is completely different, right? The syntax I use is different. So look at all those different things. Um, uh, and then this is a reputation. This was supposed to be markup languages, and then for it's supposed to be hypertext, uh, hypertext markup language is HTML. Uh, and then five is supposed to be relational databases, but it doesn't matter anyway. And then finally, we start looking at digital libraries. Now, uh, I'll pause it for you to all. You notice that during our discussion of digital libraries, right? You notice that you get an appreciation of the fact that, in fact, the things we're talking at digital libraries are, in fact, making use of these fundamental concepts that we have discussed beforehand. What we'll starts as a digital library system is an information system. It is made up of, fundamentally, it's like three layers. You can view it as being composed of three layers, right? So the user interface, the service layer, and the repository. The repository will make use of databases, right? The interface will make use of HTML. Look at this repository here. Yeah? The user repository. What you're seeing is text here. This is generated using HTML. Behind the scenes, there is a relational database management system integrated with this. It's called PostgreSQL, right? So by module six, we'll start actually linking the different fundamental concepts introduced to us, right? Um, and then we'll look at some key fundamental aspects related to digital libraries, really, and look at some specific types of digital libraries. Uh, and then maybe hopefully invite people. And in all these different modules, especially once we start modules, uh, maybe five going forward, we'll start inviting people to come and give talks, right? So. And also, besides that, we'll have a discussion about open research areas in these different, uh, different themes that we're going to be discussing. In the event that maybe if some, someone is interested in doing research in digital libraries, then they'll have an idea of what the starting point might be, right? Uh, and then we start our discussion of information retrieval system. Now, granted, in an ideal case, maybe what would, be, what would be appropriate would be to have a discussion of information retrieval before digital libraries. We can do that maybe just because a digital library we typically have a service associated to information retrieval, right? So like I said, I said uh, uh, this space is integrated with Apache Solar. Apache Solar is a search service, right? It's a, it provides a search service. Right? So maybe it would make sense if we cover module seven before module six, but it doesn't matter really. We can, we might not, we might, we may, we'll see how it goes. All right, so we'll look at information retrieval, understand exactly how data is indexed, we'll look at uh, the theory behind information retrieval, the classic one being uh, the so-called inverted file, right? How that is created, uh, all the fancy things, and then we'll do some hands-on here. 
uh, by uh, working with Apache Solar or maybe Elasticsearch. Uh, and then finally, we shall transition to the last topic, which is integrated library systems. Mostly this is going to be like a discussion of uh, things that you'd have to go through for you to maybe implement or set up an integrated library management system. Uh, but more importantly, maybe we'll look at some case study applications. Uh, and usually these case study applications are normally open source platforms like Viewfind and Koha and Open Bibli. There's a whole bunch of them, by the way. But all right. So uh, again, just a reminder that the split up of the modules was as follows. So module one and two was covered by Dr. Piri or Jackson and portions of module three and four were also covered by Jackson. I'll be responsible for modules five all the way up to eight. But like I said, I'll start the discussion. We'll start this discussion by uh, looking at some aspects of module three that Jackson would not have covered. Great. So in closing here, I just wanted to mention a few things here, right? So what I would encourage us to think about as we're having these conversations, because these are discussions we are having, let's think about what we are doing next year, the research component of the program we're pursuing. Uh, and in my case, our focus also to think about how we can apply some of these things to make life slightly bearable in the Republic of Zambia, right? So, and I know our interest in all of this is all max and the degree that we're getting, we're going to walk up the podium and we're given that paper, but we should think about what we can do to better the lives of the citizens of the Republic, right? And I always try and draw uh, colleagues' attention, especially for postgraduate courses that I coordinate to Vision 2030. And the key aspect of Vision 2030 that is linked to what we're doing is the so-called goal where we are striving to turn Zambia into, is it an, a knowledge and information-based society by 2030? The president recently reminded us that we are counting down. We're remaining with 10 years, right? What have we done? What have we accomplished, right? What can we do? Um, if I were you, I know that the vast majority of you are probably working. You're under a lot of pressure. I could hear uh, voices in the background. I saw somebody, uh, I think the son was uh, with her. All of these things, right? Would potentially make it tremendously difficult for you to maybe work through assessments. I know it's not easy to work, to, to juggle life, uh, pe your personal life, your work associated things and school, right? But I highly encourage you to attempt the assessments, right? You can pass this course if you are serious, because the assessment is 60%. The pass mark is 50. There is going to be a temptation for you to say, ah, I can't do this, or I'll do it later on. And then you realize the assessment is due tomorrow. You try and put together something, I assure you, you will not get anything reasonable there in terms of marks, right? <clears throat> so if I were you, really try as much as possible to, the moment uh, there's an open data associated with an assessment, just work through that and then just do it, right? And again, I draw attention to academic dishonesty. We take this very seriously. Uh, please stay away from this, right? Copying and whatnot. We have ways of detecting these things. Okay. Uh, I'm wary of the fact that, uh, oh, sorry, Matilda. I chucked her out. I'm wary of the fact that we, <clears throat> we've gone beyond the one hour located, although we started late here because people are late. But I'll, I'll ask questions. Uh, I'll, I'll invite questions, sorry. If you have concerns and comments. And I would like comments on this thing I'm proposing here by the way. I didn't have comments then, but I would like comments here. I very much want comments here. You see this thing, right? I don't know how it's going to work here. First-to-first uh, -first interactions were possible for us because uh, we, we could have workshops. We round up people together, but comments, please. Uh, hello? Are there any questions? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes. Oh, there's a question, I think. Yes, hi. In terms of the. Uh, um, so, so, sorry, you're breaking up. I couldn't get you. Start your question again. Are we writing the exams in uh, December or do we have something uh, uh, in July? No, no, there's no exam in July. Yeah, this, this course is a one-year course. There's no exam in July. The, 
the exam is written towards the end of the year. And last time I checked, it was somewhere in December, right? So this there's not the only assessment you are writing in between now is just assignments and tests, right? The exam is at the end, and the exam is based on all the eight modules, by the way. I uh, I will dump uh, sample exams and pass uh, the exam. By the way, it's a very trivial exam for, for postgraduate courses. These are mostly you don't have to be uh, uh, really concerned about the exam. I'll just open up with some exam from last year, I guess, then so that people have an idea of what sort of things to expect. And I'll dump these on Astria as we, uh, wow. Oh, I don't have the exam here. Why? Uh, <clears throat> I apologize. Let me see if I can find. Uh, but I need to let someone in. I think that someone wants to the keyword. All right, so if I can show you a sample exam here quickly. Uh, I need to organize my drive here. I have it as part of this. No. Uh, just, sorry, Alex, just a second. I need to let someone in again. No. Uh, I apologize, I'm trying to get to. Um, I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to get to uh, a sample exam paper so that I show you. How. So the, the exam is written at the end of the year, but I want to showcase, wow, assessments. Exam. I'm, I'm surprised that the exam is not here. What happened to me last year? Oh, it should be here. What can I do? This one. Yes. No. Wow. No. Okay, let's go to 2018. Examination. Perfect. So the exam will be first, you have three hours and you'll be something like this, right? Very easy questions, really, if you go through these. You normally have options, right? Um, there's usually sufficient questions for you to work through. These things will be done, by the way, exams from last year, before last year, and the other year, so that you have an idea of what to expect. So, again, the exam is at the end of the year, December, somewhere there. Are there any other questions? Oh, maybe the chat has questions. <clears throat> Something that says uh, it, would, it would be good if we share the slides on Moodle and then meet like this. Oh, yes, it's, that's a plan, actually. So this thing that I was working us through, this slide, I, I said I'm making changes to the modules. All of these things are going to be shared, right? And then my suggestion to you, and these are suggestions, I suggested at some point that we we have these interactions. There's a live query answer session, something similar to this, where we sit and then we try and look at what people are experiencing or what sort of challenges people are experiencing for each module as we cover the module, right? And by the way, one of the things I forgot to mention here, I said, no, I didn't forget, I actually mentioned this, but I want feedback. I said, I'm going to restart this with module three and just cover or gloss over that because Dr. Piri has told me that some aspects of these things were discussed. If you think that there are certain things that you want us to just quickly go through, maybe in module two or something, not the entire thing, we can do that, right? We still have a bit of time here, I think. But I mentioned that we are going to reboot from three. If you have concerns about that, you must let me know. If you think that there are certain aspects of maybe module one or module two that were a bit unclear, we can just do a quick walk through a, a screen, a recorded screencast on that if you want, right? Uh, so, Tinta, yes, I, I also think it would be very good if we share the slides on, and it's not Moodle, it's Astri apparently. Uh, so they will be shared. Everything, all the resources are gonna be shared, including links and uh, open textbooks. And then William, William says, uh, is it possible to have all mics muted except for yours? Oh, yes, I think it's possible. Uh, normally, when I hear echo, I normally mute people, uh, myself from here, but, but I think it was, so yes, it's possible. But are there any other questions? Uh, there's a question saying, Matilda is saying, uh, is it our airball class trip? Thank you so much, Matilda, very diligent here. Although I think she's one of those who, bother, who didn't bother to to attend our talks uh, <coughs> or to attend the last 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 Tuesday's talk. By the way, CIDARS are coming back next year doing another talk. This is to do with uh, smart care, so I encourage you to attend. In fact, I'll send an invitation. 
So Matilda says, is it possible for us to be learning through this platform, especially for the practical sessions? I like waiting to learn or practical during two weeks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so, so the practical sessions, right? Uh, we will, I will produce offline screencasts similar to this, right? So there'll be recorded screencasts of me walking you through different things. Of course, this is for the different calls that I teach. Uh, so I'll walk you through that and then to try and answer some of the challenges that you might have, we will schedule another interaction, live interaction like this, where you'll be able to ask questions based on the modules you'd have read, the supplementary materials and the offline screencast. So yes, I think I think so too. Uh, so it says, please also share data or modules from one to eight. Yes, yes, Mwenda. I mean, so that's the plan. I mentioned that uh, I'm still making changes to the modules and I've made a commitment to say I'm, I'm working with a, a May 31st deadline. By the end of the month, all the modules should be done and they'll be shared with you. Updated modules, not the, the notes that were shared from last year because some aspects are going to change. Um, and we'll have like a, additional details associated with the modules also. And the format is going to be different also. Uh, when are we expected to have the first? Good question, Jacqueline, thank you very much. Now, this whole COVID thing has disrupted uh, the calendar. Uh, I, I was speaking to Dr. Kakandula not too long ago, and uh, his response, when I asked him about residential school, his re response was that uh, he's not sure yet He's still waiting for IDE to send through instructions. So we'd have to wait and see if IDE has a plan for this. It's likely the calendar is going to be stretched somehow, right? Uh, but there's already talk of um, apparently the Minister of Higher Education has made certain recommendations to say uh, some students can start coming to campus or something. I'm sure, looking at residential school, I'm sure a plan can be devised on how residential school can be handled. But Remember, right, colleagues, that uh, UNSA is a designated quarantine center. Now, I don't even remember the last time I went to, to campus myself. I mostly work from home, right? I teach online, even the regular programs, just because I, uh, I don't think it's very safe to be on campus, right? Even way still for you guys who are, who are going to be living in some of these areas where, and I know the drivers are mostly in the new rails, so maybe they'll come up with an alternative plan. But, UNSA is a designated quarantine center for truck drivers. So this whole residential school thing, I don't think it would, is going to work anytime soon. Um, so Alex, I don't know what you want me to repeat here, but uh, it's, uh, if you could ask again, if not, you can easily play back this recording. The entire session is being recorded. And then Adrian saying, do you have soft copies of uh, recommended materials? I have soft copies for most of them. I'll dump them onto Austria as soon as I'm done with the course, yes. Uh, the resources will be shared, actually. What, 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 I, what we do for this course is all the things that we say are recommended, you see, each, each, each of these modules is going to have a section that says bibliography. And typically, everything that's listed as a resource will probably be shared on, on Austria as a resource. So yes, we will share those things. All right, are there any other concerns, comments? Uh, all right, so when will be grading done? So I will, I will follow up with Dr. Piri, right? Uh, but also what you can do is seeing as Dr. Piri is on that WhatsApp group, you can, you can just give him a nudge or even better have the class representative reach out to him and find out how far he's gone with the grading. So I'm not going to grade the assessments that have been shared by Dr. Piri, he will handle the grading. I will only grade or handle the, the grading associated with subsequent assessment. All right, so where, where will this recording be posted? So uh, this recording will be posted uh, on my YouTube channel. I'll also send out mail to the mailing list with a link so that you can access and download it and play it back at your own time. Um, especially for those of you that may be experiencing connection issues, you can easily play it back and listen to it or something. Are there any other concerns, comments, questions? Are we happy with my proposed way of handling this? You are a bit apprehensive about some aspects of what I'm proposing here, especially. I'm more interested in here. Okay. Are there any questions associated with this? Okay, I'll refer to the question. Are we all comfortable with, with what I'm proposing? And, and I like having discussions with postgraduate students, right? Because at this level, I think we, we, we've we gone beyond a, a, a scenario where you just 
you do what, uh, okay, so Jacqueline seems comfortable. You do what the lecturer is proposing. It's supposed to be a back and forth type of interaction. Uh, and by the way, it's one of the reasons why we heavily make use of seminars, right? Because it turns out that most, we know that most of you are industry experts, actually. You've been practicing some of the things you're going to be doing. It's going to be revision, and maybe you're just going to have to beef up some of the things you already know with the theoretical concepts that you might not have been familiar with, right? So we always like back and forth, and so if you have concerns about this, uh, if, you can, if you want to think about this, please think about it, and then reach out to everybody else via the mailing list and send us your concerns. That would be nice. If there are any questions here. Okay, proposal is fine, yes, I'm personally comfortable. Great, good so far. So far, so good. Okay, great. Uh, so looking at the time, um, and um, I'll see you tentatively. I'm probably going to schedule uh, another live interaction maybe in the next two weeks, because by then I would have shared the recording of uh, module number three, which I plan to do very, very soon. So I'll do the recording and a bit of hands-on so you can already start working through that. And then we'll have uh, a Q&A session. Uh, hopefully it works. I mean, if two weeks would be too much, we'll, we'll just maybe lengthen it to after three weeks. If two weeks would be too little, we can try and see if we can stretch or compress it so that we have these interactions maybe, I don't know about every week because of my schedule, but maybe we can have them every week. At some stage, maybe we'll have ad hoc interactions. But if you want an interaction as a class before the two weeks, you can always reach out to me, maybe via the, the class trip, right, and suggest, say, can we have an interaction where we discuss this because most of us don't understand this aspect, right? So we don't necessarily have to wait until the two weeks to have this live interaction. We can change it on an adult basis. And in terms of my preference on when to have these, because you people work, right? I, 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 normally, maybe these interactions are going to be after hours, anywhere between 17 and maybe 19. I hope people are comfortable with that. In certain instances, it might be a weekend or something. So when I share this interaction, if you are uncomfortable, if the vast majority of the class is uncomfortable with the time, we can negotiate and come up with a slot that is convenient for everybody. We want to make this work. Great, so if there are no concerns or questions, um, thank you very much. Uh, I think this is going to, we want to make this work. I'm really looking forward to interacting with you. Uh, very, very much, and more importantly, learning from you, because I know that most of you have been practicing these things. Right, so, and someone says one, Matilda says one or two weeks would be great. I think so too. So the, the idea behind the one or two weeks is, I mentioned this, you have a personal life, you have work, you know, so I know, right? In fact, two weeks is going to be too much, I, I, I imagine, but we want to make this work. So, great, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you, right? Learning from you especially, and, and I hope you will learn um, something from me as well. Uh, not just memorizing the things, although there's little to memorize here, but I hope you can learn, I hope I can share some of the knowledge that I've acquired in the last, what, eight, nine years. Uh, I've been studying digital libraries, for instance, since 2011. My entire master's dissertation was centered around digital libraries. My PhD has some aspect of digital libraries. My PhD has some aspect of information retrieval, right? So I'm really looking forward to sharing my knowledge with you. I'm really looking forward to learning from you. So um, if there are no questions, then I'm going to log out. But uh, this is, I just want to mention that this is a nice way of you guys catching up as a group. So every time we have a, a session like this, when I leave, I encourage you to continue discussing some things that would have raised in these interactions as a group, right? You can use this. This meeting will go on until the last person leaves. So you can use this as a platform to engage with each other. And I do encourage you to do that, actually. So when I leave, don't leave maybe just catch up with each other and just try and see if you can discuss some aspects of the course or something or what's been discussed. Okay, thank you so much and uh, see you soon. Please stay safe, especially those of you that are closer yeah. to the phone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice meeting everybody here. Man, their mic is still off. Have you people already submitted the assignment for assignments too? For which one? Uh, Dr. Aka. 
for Dr. Aka. Yeah, like I for me I submit it. Mm -hmm. They're working with the methodology. It is due to tonight, not so, or Monday, eight and eight. Ah, very true. Hello? It's I'm, I'm, I'm okay. planning to submit before okay. before midnight. That's what my team said. I'm not late. But you mentioned that it's due 18 hours today. Not, same, not 23. No, it's 18 no. hours today. No, the public oh. platform will be open at, until Monday. All right. Yeah, according to his email. Oh. Mm -hmm. The platform will All be right. open until Monday. Until Monday. So yes. I, I, I was thinking it is due midnight. So I I thought of submitting it after. Okay, it is, after this session. I think it's due today. There's a mail. There's a mail which he sent. Due today. Mm -hmm. oh, There's a mail which he sent. It's due today, eighteen hours. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you for the reminder. I'll try to do that before I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. it's also that one cannot submit by Monday. Mm -hmm. It was the actually. I like to talk to you. Hello. Maybe. Yeah. What's Hello. You can talk to yourself. Those Hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 What are you saying? Uh, the one from Mrs. Zulu. Uh, it's involving as well. The desk reset. <laughs> that one also. Wow. Why did she have to put it as the reset? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Guys, I, I went back without saying bye. Yeah? Ah, I don't mind this, guys. <laughs> okay, nice I have seen you all. To me, I, I, I do some work. Okay, okay. you're a papa. Okay, okay people stay safe. All right. All right. All right. Have, a, have a good night. Good night. I have to move about a kilometer going home because home I have a challenge of uh, internet. Oh, oh okay. So just for this session, you have to travel to travel. Yeah, so I have to go to the house. Network. Get a quiet to, in the house. Have to go back home. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Hi, Adrian. 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 <laughs> Adrian. As, as in, yeah. Okay. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> bye, Chilipa. Bye bye. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Adrian, yes, my mic was off. I've just turned it on. Oh, how are you? Yes, yeah. I'm well. Thanks. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, it's mm. good to hear. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> busy, busy with assignments. Yeah, mind if I I'll come to your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly <laughs> okay. Oh, it'll be well, dear. Don't worry. All right. <laughs> okay. Good night. Good okay, night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye. How do I live if I zoom with you? Wait, everyone has left. Everyone has left. How do I live? Oh, 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 oh. I'm disconnected. I don't see my leg.
Okay. I'm in the circle. Hey, we. Come on. What I listen to the circle I'm in 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 the circle that we want to answer our deep, deep, deep. That's your time now. That we can give It's not for the mouth. Eh? Yeah. Your people. <laughs> Come on, Jaya, boy. Hey, like I could see. A face, but I don't know. Let me check here. I know everyone is going. No, no. Oh, 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 oh,